everybody welcome back to another creative video um, I thought it would be fun today to share with you how I created the cover for my composition journal that I use as my art journal so if you're new to me if you're new to my channel something to know is that I 100% believe in using whatever supplies you have on hand especially if you're working on a budget while I have an art degree and I love to create all kinds of art that hangs on the walls, when I am art journaling, I oftentimes grab really economic supplies because I don't want pressure. I don't want to feel precious about the things that I'm using. So I often use composition journals for my art journaling process. Um, I art journal a lot, so I go through a lot of art journals. So for me, like 50 cents to a dollar, playing around in one of these, it just works for my process and what I'm doing with the process of art journaling, which for me is oftentimes practicing, working out ideas, and just messing around without pressure. So I thought it'd be fun to share with you the process of the cover that I created for my composition journal. This is a journal that has appeared here on my channel in videos, um, different spreads that I've worked through. I've been working through this for probably the last six months. I do a lot of demos over on my Patreon community in this journal. It is just a regular old composition journal and I still have quite a few pages to go, but I am working my way through and I just hadn't got around to creating a cover. So I'm gonna let you watch me work through how I created a fun little cover for this and then added like a little ribbon so I could start tying it up as it gets bulkier and bulkier. Um, thought it'd be a fun process to share with you all. If you're interested in my process of using composition journals. I'm going to put a link in my profile and a link in this video if you want to see how I prep my pages and work through things. I get so many questions about that process, so that video answers a lot of those inquiries. So with all that said, I am going to share with you the process of how I created this cover. All right, so I'm not going to talk through the entire process because I'm actually just treating my journal cover like it's a painting. But what I like to do is open it up completely and then literally start adding layers to the outside of that journal. Those composition journals are a little bit slick. I find that acrylic paint works just fine to cover it up, to prime it for my painting. You could certainly use gesso, you could use collage elements. You can really have so much fun altering the outside of those composition journals. For me, again, I'm just gonna be treating mine like I do um, an acrylic painting on canvas or any other surface that I paint on, and that is first starting with just a really good thick layer of paint and then working over the top of it like I would a composition or painting. So this time around um, for this journal, I wanted to think less of this as like a journal with like a front and back and keep it open for the whole process and work across the front and back like I would a painting or a composition. And so I just want to share at the beginning, you don't need anything fancy or special to prime or cover things up. Um, acrylic paint is going to work just fine. And and once you've got that fresh surface with no trace of that composition journal, you can then work on your front and back cover however you see fit. I'm actually going to sketch my design out, which is going to be kind of this colorful, whimsical moth that stretches from my front cover to the back. So when I close it up, it kind of goes across the two sides and let you all watch me. And at the very end, I will share with you how I like to create a little closure for these composition journals just so as they get big, as I work through them, they start to bulk up. I've got like a little closure that I can tie things closed and keep it all together.
call it done I've got my moth my whimsical moth over that cover um, and you'll notice part of its wing stretches to the back which I kind of like I think it's kind of a fun way to treat that journal front and back and what I'm going to do is add like a little closure because when I am using one of these cheaper composition notebooks from my art journal, I find that it kind of grows and expands. Those layers really add a lot of bulk to my art journal, and I love using something to kind of keep it all together. And so what I like to use are strips of fabric. Usually they are recycled, upcycled fabric that I have here in the studio. And I use one of my favorite tools, my hot glue gun, to glue each strip, one to the front, one to the back inside cover. Um, I I'm really hard on my supplies and this is one technique that I have found works really well. I am in and out of that journal and so far after years of using this process, um, my strips of fabric don't come off, nothing tears. So for me, this works for my process. Strips of fabric are kind of a fun way to add like a fiber element to that art journal. Um, the way that I cover things up is just using some scrap paper. I have so much scrap paper here in the studio. Um, I've got just two pieces of watercolor paper that have a bunch of splatter on them and I'm going to be gluing these down um, over the top of my little fabric strip just to cover things up, to cover up that composition journal um, so as things start to look and feel more my style within those journal pages. This is something I don't necessarily do right when I crack open a new notebook. Um, it's usually like we weeks or months down the road that I start coming up with a design from my cover and altering um, the inside and outside of things. Um, but this is just a fun way to start transforming a really cheap composition notebook into something that just feels completely different. I like covering things up. I like painting over that notebook paper. I like proving to myself that you can take something that is totally budget friendly and really get creative with a variety of different techniques and layers um, to transform it into something completely new. And so this is one of my favorite ways to do it is add those fabric strips, cover up the inside and outside of those covers, alter the front of everything, and then I've got something that is super unique and I can keep working and playing around in those pages as time goes by. So I hope you all enjoyed this process. Again, I will put a link in my description so that you can see um, the beginnings of how I transform a composition notebook. Um, the cover is a really fun way to really finish things off. Adding that little closure just adds this really special little element. And I love, love, love that you can take some really simple, cheap supplies and turn them into an art journal that works for you and your creative process. Thank you.